How much? Back off my break and uh, I'm going to talk about a British obsession, which is house prices. So Brits love to talk about house prices. Um, normally when somebody's bought a new house, um, they don't actually refer it to their home as their home, actually. They call it their property or their house. It's a, it's a source of much bragging amongst Brits. But when people ask them um, how much they paid for it or when somebody actually volunteers that information, they get it completely wrong. So I'm going to flash up the screen now, um, um, a, a kind of an, a, what used to be an ordinary house uh, that, that's now up for sale for £700,000 in Croydon of all places. So if somebody asked the person that, that buys that house how much did they pay, they would actually say 700000 But they'd be completely wrong in that because they've forgotten a very important element of their housing purchase which is the mortgage and the interest that's due on the mortgage. So I'm going to take you through those numbers now. Now, at the moment, we're in uh, the 1st of August 2023, and the average mortgage rate is about 6.5% in the UK. <clears throat> so just to um, be ultra-cautious and not be accused of exaggerating, I'm going to go for a 6% uh, mortgage rate. So according to this BBC mortgage calculator, borrowing £700,000 over 30 years at 6% interest gives us a monthly repayment of £4,237.85p. So I'm going to take a liberty here and just round that up to £4,238. I'm going to add an extra 15p on that just so we get rid of the decimal points. So 4,238 a month. There's 12 months in a year. So uh, 4,238 multiplied by 12 gives us our annual repay, our, yeah, our annual payment of 50,856 pounds a year. So that's quite a lot of money. The last thing that we have to do is uh, multiply by 30 years. So 50,856 pounds uh, multiplied by 30 years gives us £1,525,680. So the house um, didn't really cost the buyer 700000 It actually um, cost them over double that. It cost them £1,525,680. Now, I think that most people who... Um, Buy, buy housing, get into the property market, um, they're completely ignorant of that. They actually, to their dying day, they actually probably do believe that they paid 700,000 for it, when in actual fact, they actually paid more than double. So what conclusions can we draw from all of these, these things, uh, this, this phenomena? The first one is, um, this is how bankers get rich. They, uh, they don't lend out savings, they create money out of nothing. Uh, and they get you into debt and then they harvest your income from you via interest repayments. And uh, homeowners, um, they, they don't realise just how much interest they end up paying on the mega debts that they take on to buy overpriced property. So what's the alternative? Um, some people will say, well, what are you going to do then? If you don't um, take on a mortgage, you won't be able to buy a house. And you'll be forever renting and renting is dead money. Um, what's interesting about that is um, that there are some advantages of renting and you could say that rent is equally as dead money as, as mortgage interest is. Um, and then also you could say it's kind of less risky, particularly if you're moving around a lot, you know, and, and you're early on in your career, you know, have, there are costs associated with buying and selling houses that you don't really have with renting. But you know what I would say to, to people is that um, maybe an alternative is for you to do what what well what some communities do already, which is um, you start work, you invest uh, part of your income regularly, maybe in shares, maybe in other assets, <clears throat> and then over time your wealth increases, and then once you've built up enough wealth, you you buy the house. Now that might not be a seven hundred thousand pound house in Croydon, but you know, much better I would say is to save, invest, and receiving uh, interest income 
rather than getting to debt and pay interest. So does that make sense? It's much better to receive interest than to pay interest. And you can do that by avoiding debt. And instead, what you're going to do is you earn your income from, in all probability, working. And then every single week, every single month, every single year, you put some of that aside and you buy uh, assets that generate an income. Like, as I say, the most obvious one is shares. And once you've built up enough wealth, then you can buy your house. Uh, the other thing that I would say, too, is, is timing. So um, I certainly wouldn't be buying a house at the moment because the housing market, um, housing prices go in peaks and troughs. There's, there's bubbles and busts. And at the moment, we're at the end of a 30-year credit bubble. So house prices relative to wages are about as high that, uh, as they're going to go. Um, you, know, the, you know, there's only one way f from now. And actually, if you look at it over the last 10 years, um, once you take into account inflation, house prices haven't really been increasing. And then the other thing that I would say, too, is um, the world is your oyster. So, you know, you might not be able to buy a house in Croydon, but then again, like, who wants to live in Croydon anyway? There are better options available in, in other parts of the world where housing might be a lot cheaper. Just as a, you know, just as a matter of interest, I was talking to my wife this morning and she was... As, recalling this conversation that she had uh, with with one of our neighbours and they'd just been, they're two Finns, and um, they'd been to Gdansk. And immediately my prejudices came out and thought, oh, what an odd place um, to go for a, for like a city break to Gdansk, you know, in my ignorance. And then I looked it up on, on uh, Google, on, on Google Maps and whatever and the images and it looked a fantastic place. Now, I dare say, you know, it's a lot cheaper to buy a house in somewhere like Gdansk than it is to buy a house in Poland. And I dare say that the quality of life in Gdansk is about a million times better than it is in Croydon, you know, um, circa 2023. You know, OK, you'd have to learn another language and it takes a bit of a get up and go and guts um, to emigrate and, 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 fight and look for a better life. But... You know, I think you come to a stage at some point where you either have to stop moaning and shut up or you do something about it. So that's my that's my thoughts on, on the housing market. Obviously, you know, um, if even small changes in the, um, the mortgage interest rate have massive impacts on the monthly payments. I'll put some figures up now for what interest rates, mortgage interest rates were not so recently, 4%. 4 so the figures drop and it, it, it looks like, <laughs> it doesn't look quite as bad a rip-off. <laughs> it's still over a million quid. But anyway, um, that's all I want to say today. So uh, God bless.